Okay, so back to physical weathering. We are going to discuss about the first type of physical weathering that is pressure release or exfoliation. Okay, as we have already name discussed, pressure release. As we know, there is a particular pressure exerted by each rock. Then if it is being released, a sudden release in this pressure or a gradual release in this pressure, that will change the physical appearance of the rock. That is known as exfoliation. Okay. So pressure release is a significant type of mechanical weathering. So in physical weathering, this pressure release is an important factor which leads to various formation of mechanical weathering of rocks. A large mass of them. Then now we should have to discuss how this pressure release will occur. Okay. A large mass of rock originally forms under great pressure from the weight of several kilometers of rock above it. Yes, as we know these rocks are formed under great pressure and also it is having the weight of several kilometers that is the underlying rock will have to weigh all the above rock mass. Okay, that we already know the basic concept. Then, this rock is gradually exposed by tectonic uplift of the region followed by erosion of the overlaying rock. Then, what will happen? First is that it is uh, carrying or it is having the weight of all the above rock mass. Then, secondly, what it is happening is that this layer should have to be uplifted. This underlying layer should have to be up uplifted. How it is being uplifted? due to some erosional activities mainly due to some tectonic movement if the upper layer is moving due to some tectonic activities what will happen obviously the lower level will have to arise it will be arising why because the upper portion is already moved due to some tectonic reasons or due to some tectonic movements it is being already removed so what will happen obviously the bottom layer should have to raise isn't it that is it will raise the overlying rock the removal of the great weight of the rock above usually termed unloading yes then what happened unloading as the word indicates unloading it is nothing but when due to this tectonic activities what will happen the overweight or the overlaying rock will be removed so underlying rock will be uplifted in this process so what will happen an unloading process an unloading process is occurring when this overlaying rocks are being moved okay then cracks called sheet joints develop parallel to the outer surface of the rocks as the outer part of the rock expands more in the inner part then when this process is occurring that is the rock is being upwelling Okay, then what will happen? There is a possibility of formation of various cracks. Isn't it? There is a possibility of forming various cracks in it. Then how these cracks are formed? These cracks, they are developing in the outer surface of the rock. Okay, when this process is occurring, various cracks are formed in the outer surface of the rock. Then when this outer part of the rock expands more inner part why these cracks are occurring in the outer part because the outer part of the rock will expand more as we, as we have said the rocks is also having or the rocks is also expanding and contracting isn't it we have already discussed that the rock is being exposed to water sunlight everything so during heat time what will happen as normal breathing process, the rocks also will breathe in the sense it will contract as well as it will expand. So, expansion and contraction of rocks is also happening. So, then this contraction or this expansion, the outer portion is being more expanding than compared to the inner portion. That is why the reason that the cracks or the sheet joints are present in the outer surface of the rock when compared to the inner part okay then on slopes gravity may cause the rocks between such joints to break loose in concentric slabs then if it is a slope or in slope what will happen 
this is general case the outer surface will be having cracks and sheet joints why because it's more expanding then if it is in a slope area or it is in slope gravity may cause rocks between such joints to break yes so as a reason of this gravity these joints may have to break how it is breaking in concentric slabs yeah it is it will be in a concentric manner or a concentric slabs from the underlying rock mass okay this process of spalling of rock layer is called as expo exfoliation so when this upper surface or the upper portion of the rocks is being detached this process this peeling it is the peeling yeah it is the peeling then this peeling process it is known as exfoliation then to know or to make it is very clear we are explaining this exfoliation in another way that it it is somewhat similar to peeling layers of an onion yes as we know we always used to peel the unwanted layers of an onion isn't it in same way what process is that the upper layers of the rocks is being peeled away why this peeled away due to the pressure release so due to the pressure release the upper surface of the rock is being peeled away and that process is known as exfoliation that is also known as peeling layers peeling layers okay exfoliation is also known as pressure release or peeling of rock layers yes why this happens it is because of the pressure release of the rock mass okay yes then exfoliation domes are large then whether this exfoliation process is a micro scale or it is a macro scale or it is a global that is we are discussing that exfoliation domes are large it is not so small it is large rounded landforms develops in massive rocks such as granite yes how this exfoliation or how this peeling will look like on a rock mass how it will be it will be small round 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 pieces like that it will be removed from the rock mass okay that is exfoliation small rounded landforms that will be formed or it will be developing into the massive rock an example is given that in granite granite all pieces you can see various concentric circular path that is actually this removal of this thing okay and that is known as exfoliation all right yes then there are various examples also given some exfoliated mountains there are some mountains where exfoliation is more visible and it is very prominent okay one is some uh, one ex example is that stone mountain in georgia okay stone mountain in georgia is an example for exfoliation mountain and next is half dome in yosemite half dome in yosemite is also an example for exfoliation process where we can easily observe exfoliation process okay yes now we can see various imageries how this exfoliation process yeah here you can see here you can see various figures yeah in the fifth figure you can see the exfoliation process that is how this upliftment of various layers will occur in the earth crust here you can see the earth crust uh, will moves then here you can see the rock mass is present when it is being moved due to some tectonic movements how this happens yeah here you can see the upwelling of this lower layer here you can see in this walls wall will form sheet joints joining will be forming in this layer finally it will look like this here you can see various concentric circles and various layers this is actually known as what exfoliation process okay then here you can see the example that is half dome in yosemite okay it is in california this is an exa example for an exfoliation dome here you can see various layers are just peeled out here you can see various layers are peeled out from this mountain so 
this is half the mountain in your mind this is in california and this is an example for what exfoliation dome okay here you can see some onion like layers of rocks that has been peeled from this mountain okay yes so this is what it is pressure release pressure release or it is termed as exfoliation or peeling okay onion like peeling onion like peeling it is happening okay yes and next is frost action now second type of physical weathering it is known as frost action okay frost action it is nothing but it is a type of mechanical weathering that is frost action is the mechanical effect of freezing water on rocks yeah as we have just said across biological weathering this is also a kind of physical weathering that it is in this cracks and all this water will be entrapped and it will be forming as ice then the surface area will be increasing yeah the same process yeah now let us see what it is frost action you know it commonly occurs at frost wedging or frost heaving yes this frost action it is also known as frost wedging or frost heaving in frost wedging the expansion of freezing water splits the rock apart yeah what will happen the frost heaving or the frost wedging what will happen is that expansion of this water will split the rock into two parts most rocks contains a system of cracks called joints as we have already said when this process is moving it will always or it will have some joints water that has entered into these joints can freeze and expand when the temperature drops yes we have already said that when water enters through this cracks fissures or joints what will happen as tem temperature fluctuations will come that is temperature rise and temperature fall when temperature falls what will happen this water will be turning into ice and it will expand the expanding ice wedges the rock apart yes if it is in the form of water means it only requires a small area but when this water is being converted into ice what will happen the surface area the area will be increasing thus what will happen this ice this expanding ice wedges this will keeps the rocks apart extending the joints or even breaking the rocks into pieces this will break the rocks into various pieces okay yes that process is actually known as frost wedging then in frost wedging it is most effective in areas with many days of freezing and thawing yes freezing and thawing means it will be continuously freezing and it will be continuous that is this temperature may rise and temperature may fall in such area this frost action is more prominent yes that is in mountain tops or mid latitude regions there we can mostly observe this frost action yes then this partial thawing during the days add new water into the ice in the crack refreezing the night such new ice to the old ice yes then sometimes this won't freeze completely it may partially freeze and again it may be filled with water then again this ice and water it will refreeze into another gain mass okay so this process will occurs in such a manner then it is known as frost action okay here i think you can see yeah now here you can see the imagery is for frost action yeah that it is here you can see the water is filled in this crack now you see freezes if it is water only this much area is needed when it is freeze in ice the area is expanded then what will happen gradually when this process occurs the rock will gradually divide it into two parts okay yes